Well, can we have a talk about the Postal Service? And I don't usually make any more di uh, direct uh, videos to them lately, but I think it's about time I actually make one. Now, there was a recent package I have with a VCR in it, and I tend to believe that inside this VCR, um, VCR I wouldn't have been busted if they hadn't dropped it. And how do I know they dropped it? Well, I, I have, we have cameras around the house, and when they bring the dumb, the damn VCR to your front door, it's like, it's like, like, let me give you an example. This is what I hate, and they shouldn't do this, but they do this to save time, because that's all they care about is saving time. Even though no matter what they do, they still screw everything up. See this? Bringing it to the door. Oh, here, that obviously it didn't drop like that, but the first drop, they just throw it like that. Now, it's not like they throw it from all the way down the stairs, but they do throw it a little bit. And they don't understand that there could be breakable things inside where just a few small bangs can really cause problems to it. Now, you could say it has nothing to do with the mail carrier. It has to do who sorted out the mail. Even though, even if it's that's the case, the postal service is still responsible. Are they not responsible for things they break? Um, I know for a fact that um, this isn't the first time this has happened. This, <laughs> it's been a disaster, actually. Um, I, they, I, I tried all these different laser disc players that we, um, that we, what's it called? Um, they, uh, what's it? They, they broke inside the mechanisms, except those are more damaged because there's more fragile parts in, in a laser disc player, in my opinion. So, um, you know, when I got a laser disc player from the Postal Service, they decided to, um, I don't know, I don't remember what they did with those packages when I was looking at them. But I remember those must have been slammed against the floor, too. And then they tried to, the seller tried to blame us, saying we were just conning them and shit. We weren't conning them. They sold us an item that was defective. Um, well, at least one of them. One of them was sold that, and defective. Because usually if you break pots in the mail, when you go to plug it in, the unit will still turn on. It just don't make all weird noises and stuff. Like it did with my VCR. And two of the laser displays that came. They turned on, but didn't really make any noise. I mean, they made noise, but didn't do anything else. And then one of them had a display on the front, and um, the display never turned on. So that means that someone sent it to me that was defective. But you got to watch out. What you have to do is to test these items as soon as you get them in the mail. Don't wait 50 years from now, like a week later, to decide, oh, the laser display doesn't work. Because then the seller can say, well, a week went by. Now all of a sudden it doesn't work. How convenient. They might think you broke it. Um, uh, that, uh, how very unlikely that is, but um, people might think that. I've never conned anyone like that before, but I can tell you that there are people that will. Um, that's the reason why I think a lot of eBay sellers are, are very, you know, weary. They're, they're kind of, they don't know what to do in a situation because of all kinds of different things. A lot of them have do not return, then you have to go through money back guarantee, you know, that's other bullshit. Um... The fact is, this is how you learn and avoid this problem. Don't ship through the post office. It's just not, it's a bad place to ship from. I've told you stories about family members having things stolen from packages, all kinds of different stuff. There's no reason to shop from them. They're not giving you a premium service, even an okay service. They're giving you a service that's garbage. Now I understand FedEx and UPS, I've sort of saw some horror stories from them too personally, but at least you can say that they have a way better track record than the post office does, so you may want to consider not sending anything to them, because sending them something, um, sending them not to them, you may want to consider not sending anything through the post office, because there could be catastrophic consequences. A lot of people send the Christmas gifts to people, and you really should think twice before you send through them again, because what happens if you send through them and it gets lost in the mail? Like, now your gift is gone, and you're never going to get any of the money back. First of all, if you didn't put any insurance, they definitely won't um, cover it. And even if you do have insurance, you still have to prove the case that it was their fault. I mean, a lot of times, insurance doesn't do anything, to tell you the truth. It's just, it's just a bunch of crap. Now, you've got to remember, this. people are going to make excuses for this organization that um, they are underfunded, they don't have enough money. 
blah, 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 blah. Well, you know what? They were underfunded 20 years ago. Are you going to keep using the same damn excuse every single year why you can't deliver someone's package the right way? Uh, I mean, come on. In 20, uh, and about, let's see, about 12 years ago, this service was running pretty smooth. I remember when I was buying packages, things were coming out in on time. There was a mail lady that would actually deliver it to our front porch. She, they, they, um, they don't do like they do now and throw it. it it's really irritating, and I, I think that somebody should have to answer for it. And then if you try to call the post offices, any, if any, I know other people have these problems, you're brought to an answer machine. You can't even talk to anyone for real. So if you have a problem, forget trying to talk to someone at the post office. I wish there was someone you could speak to. Uh, but even then, they won't be able to help you. And a lot of times, um, things suck too. That sometimes your package will arrive like five minutes after they got your mail truck goes out. So you're screwed for the day. You can't get your package. There should be a way to go directly to the post office and pick it up. After all, the package is already there. They sorted all the money. Um, maybe there's more to sort out. I don't know. My post office isn't big, though. They sorted all the mail out to go out that day, so they're already out the door. Why can't someone go and pick up your package if it's already at the post office? I don't understand that. Um, there's also, I don't understand, is how can you guarantee a next, next day delivery at the post office if you can't even guarantee... Um, a priority mail, which after all the problems now, they said two-day priority may not be two days anymore. Maybe a lot less. Doesn't that suck? I mean, you get one of those envelopes that's two days or one of those boxes and um, whatever they're called. And um, you send you send them two-day priority and it can show up four or five days later. A lot of people mistake in business days also for a lot of things. Yes, Saturday and Sunday is not a business day. But the post office runs on a Saturday, different from FedEx or UPS, unless you have special delivery. But um, that's actually fun to have something on a Saturday. It's an extra day out of the week to get something. But the post office um, doesn't deliver uh, um, doesn't deliver in I, what I would say unique conditions. Like if there's a lot of rain or there's some snow, Amazon will go out and do almost anything to deliver. Post on. Um, not postal service, um, you know, FedEx or UPS, they'll deliver in almost any weather too. The postal service, oh, it's a little bad on the roads, got to stay inside for the day. I think it's ridiculous. Um, you know, I've bought so many things through these services and it's, it's really annoying that like, you know, especially if you get a, imagine getting a package from the United Kingdom or Ireland or some other country out there. Um, Imagine the problems you would have receiving a package because it, you would have to go through their postal service, then it would have to be shipped overseas, it would have to be in customs, and then it would have to go through our postal service to get to your house. What a disaster. Even when you have UPS going through all those countries, um, you still have, you can't avoid customs. Customs is a disaster in itself too. I wish there was a way we could speed up things than the way we do it now. Um, just remember, if you're looking for any stuff like I have on my channel, like laser disc plays or um, VCRs or anything like that, you're going to make sure that you have a UPS delivery driver or a FedEx. It will be worth the extra 20 or $30 for the order if you can get it. At least you have more of a guarantee it'll show up correctly. Um, if you break, if these things break in the mail, it's very, very difficult to prove to any of these people, whether it's UPS, United States Postal Service, or FedEx, you can't prove to them it broke in the mail. They could just say you broke it, um, carrying it up the steps in your house. So there's no way to prove it. So the only way to really avoid this is to get a better shipping method, and that's all there is to it. All right, bye-bye.